In 1998, Electromotive Diesel unveiled what should have been the future of American railroading, the 265H, a massive four-stroke diesel producing 6,300 horsepower, the most powerful engine EMD ever built. The math was seductive. One 265H-powered SD90MAC locomotive could replace two of the ubiquitous 3,000-horsepower SD42s that had defined freight railroading for decades. Fuel savings, crew savings, maintenance savings, it all looked perfect on paper. Union Pacific and Canadian Pacific bet millions on this revolutionary engine. Within five years, they'd all returned to what they'd tried to replace, the conservative, proven, two-stroke 710 that EMD introduced back in 1984. Here's the paradox. The 265H represented EMD's boldest engineering leap in six decades, a complete departure from the two-stroke architecture that had powered every successful EMD locomotive since 1934. Meanwhile, the 710 was just another incremental improvement of the same basic design, an evolutionary step rather than revolutionary change. The 265H failed spectacularly. Chronic overheating, crankshaft failures, emissions disasters. It became EMD's most expensive mistake. The 710 became the most reliable locomotive engine in modern history. Railroads report three-plus years between road failures. It set the benchmark that every competitor tries to match. So why did revolution fail while evolution succeeded? How did EMD's most powerful engine become its biggest disaster? And what happens when six decades of two-stroke dominance collides with four-stroke ambition? Historical Context and Development EMD's entire identity was built on two-stroke diesel technology. From the Winton 201A in 1934 through the legendary 567 series, 1938 to 1966, and into the 645 series, 1965 to 1984, every successful EMD locomotive used two-stroke architecture. It was simple, proven, and utterly reliable. Until it wasn't. The SD50, introduced in 1981, carried the 645F engine rated at 950 RPM, 50 RPM faster than traditional EMD practice. The extra speed was supposed to deliver more power. Instead, it delivered EMD's first major reliability disaster. The 645F suffered mechanical failures that shocked an industry accustomed to bulletproof EMD engines. Railroads that had trusted EMD for 40 years suddenly found locomotives constantly in the shop. EMD's response in 1984 was the 710, not a revolution, but a correction. Engineers increased displacement from 645 to 710 cubic inches per cylinder by adding just one inch of stroke. More importantly, they dropped maximum speed back to the proven 900 RPM. The 16710G3A in the SD60 produced 3,800 horsepower initially, eventually growing to 4,300 horsepower in later versions. It used EMD's traditional two-stroke design with a clever gear-driven turbocharger that acted as a supercharger at low speeds and a true turbocharger at high speeds. The SD60 was an immediate success. Railroads forgave the SD-50 disaster and returned to EMD. The 710 proved that EMD hadn't lost its touch. They'd just pushed the 645 too hard. But even as the 710 succeeded, EMD's engineers were planning something far more ambitious. The Golden Age versus the Disaster The 710's story from 1984 to 2015 was one of steady, undramatic success, exactly what railroads wanted. The SD60 restored confidence. The SD70 series sold over 1,500 units. The SD70MAC moved over 1,000 copies and became the industry standard for heavy freight. The SD70ACE, introduced in the mid-2000s to meet EPA Tier 2 standards, 
proved that the aging two-stroke design could still compete in a world of increasing environmental regulations. The reliability numbers told the real story. EMD could honestly claim that 710 engines operated three-plus years without experiencing a road failure. That's not marketing hyperbole. That's documented performance that made the 710 the benchmark by which all other locomotive engines were judged. Power grew from 3,800 to 4,500 horsepower through continuous refinement. The engine was available in V8, V12, V16, and V20 configurations, producing from 2,000 to 5,000 horsepower. Marine applications thrived. Stationary power generation installations multiplied. By the 2000s, EMD had delivered over 75,000 diesel engines worldwide, and the vast majority were still running. Then came the 265H, and everything EMD thought they knew proved wrong. The SD90MACH entered commercial service with Union Pacific in 1998, carrying the revolutionary 16265H engine. The problems started immediately. Teething issues was the polite term EMD used publicly. The reality was catastrophic. Cylinders failed under thermal stress the cooling system couldn't handle. Crankshafts broke under loads they were theoretically designed to withstand. Technical brilliance versus fundamental flaws. The 710's technical excellence came from evolutionary perfection, not revolutionary innovation. It was a two-stroke, 45-degree V engine available in configurations from V8 through V20. Each cylinder displaced 710 cubic inches through a 9.0625-inch bore and 11-inch stroke. Maximum speed was 900 RPM, a number EMD had proven reliable through decades of experience. The Uniflow scavenging design with four poppet exhaust valves per cylinder was brilliantly simple. But the genius was in the details. The gear-driven turbocharger with an overrunning clutch could act as a centrifugal blower at low engine speeds when exhaust energy was insufficient, transition to a pure turbocharger at higher speeds, and even revert to supercharging during sudden load increases. Electronic unit injectors, introduced post-1995, provided precise fuel metering without the complexity of common rail systems. The modular power assembly design meant a complete cylinder head, liner, piston, rod, and carrier could be replaced as a single unit. The weldment block construction could be repaired with conventional shop tools. Compression ratio was a conservative 16 to 1. Fuel efficiency was 9% better than the troublesome 645F. The 265H looked impressive on paper. Each cylinder displaced a massive 1,010 cubic inches through a 10.4-inch bore and 12-inch stroke. The 16-cylinder version produced 6,300 horsepower at 1,000 RPM with a brake mean effective pressure of 21.3 bar. Twin turbochargers force-fed air into the four-stroke combustion cycle. Challenges rise. The 710 faced one existential threat in its three decades of dominance, emissions regulations. The EPA's Tier 4 standards, effective January 1, 2015, represented a line the two-stroke design couldn't cross while maintaining the reliability that made it legendary. EMD initially believed they could tune the 710 to meet the new standards. Rigorous real-world testing proved otherwise. The engine could meet emissions targets in the laboratory, but not while hauling freight across the Rockies in February or through the desert in August. Laboratory conditions don't replicate sustained full-load operation at altitude in extreme temperatures. After 2015, the 710 could no longer be sold for new locomotives in the contiguous United States. Canada, Alaska, Mexico, and overseas markets remained open, but the domestic market, EMD's traditional stronghold, was effectively closed. EMD's market share, which had dropped to 30% by 2010, while GE held 70%, was about to get worse. 
The engine that had saved EMD after the SD-50 disaster couldn't save them from the EPA. The 265H faced problems the EPA didn't cause. EMD did. The cooling system that looked adequate on paper couldn't handle sustained 6,000 horsepower operation in real-world conditions. The engine overheated constantly despite twin turbochargers and advanced cooling design. Crankshafts failed from extreme loads despite being designed for exactly those loads. The finite element analysis and computer simulations that promised reliability didn't account for the brutal reality of moving 15,000-ton coal trains up mountain grades. Cylinders suffered from thermal stress that shouldn't have existed according to the engineering models. And here's the bitter irony. Emissions were worse than the two-stroke 710, despite the four-stroke design supposedly being cleaner. Fuel consumption was astronomical, negating any operational cost savings from using one locomotive instead of two. The 6,000 horsepower was operationally inflexible, too much power for many applications, forcing railroads to run engines at partial load where efficiency suffered even more. Part support was inadequate because the engine was too new and too complex. Maintenance costs were astronomical. Union Pacific's fleet spent more time in shops than on the road. Canadian Pacific had similar nightmares. The domestic market rejected the 265H completely by 2003, just five years after introduction. Even export customers needed extensive modifications to make it work. The transition. The 265H died quietly in 2003, just five years after its commercial introduction. EMD built approximately 70 locomotives with 265H engines for the North American market, a catastrophically small number for the investment made. Union Pacific returned their leased SD90MACH units to EMD, Canadian Pacific kept some briefly, then retired them. Most were either scrapped or converted back to 710 power, an admission of total failure. Export production continued. China ordered 300 engines in 2005, assembled at Dalian Locomotive Factory as the HXN3 class. India and Australian mining operations bought some. Tidewater Marine purchased 20 engines for tugboat applications in 2002, the only marine success story. But the domestic market had utterly rejected the engine. EMDX 90 and 91, the test units EMD used for emissions development, sat idle. The 710, meanwhile, continued its steady success through 2015. The SD70ACE became EMD's mainstream offering, its 4,300 horsepower output from the 16-710G3C-T2 perfectly matching what railroads actually needed. Reliability remained exceptional. That three-year road failure-free operation became the industry standard. Railroads kept ordering despite GE's market dominance. SD40-2 rebuilds used 710 engines, proof that railroads trusted the design enough to retrofit it into 40-year-old frames. Then EMD did something surprising. They resurrected the 265H's basic architecture as the 1010J. The SD70ACE-T4, introduced in 2015 to meet EPA Tier 4 standards, used a 121010J engine, producing 4,600 horsepower. Legacy and Modern Reality The 710 occupies legendary status in railroad history. It's regarded as the most reliable locomotive engine of the modern era, the benchmark against which all competitors are measured. Those three-plus years between road failures aren't occasional achievements. They're standard performance. Over 75,000 EMD diesel engines have been delivered worldwide across all variants, and thousands of 710-powered locomotives remain in daily service globally. The SD40-2, SD60, and SD70 series defined modern railroading. Parts remain in production not just for the 710, 
but for the earlier 645 and even the ancient 567, testament to EMD's commitment to supporting their designs. A thriving rebuild market put 710 engines into locomotive frames built in the 1960s. Marine and stationary applications continue profitably. The 710 was the last truly successful EMD two-stroke design, proof that the architecture could be clean, efficient, and reliable even as environmental regulations tightened. The 265H occupies an entirely different place in history, EMD's biggest failure, a cautionary tale about revolutionary ambition meeting insufficient development. The most powerful engine EMD ever built was also the least successful. Only 70-ish North American locomotives were produced before the program collapsed. Most were scrapped or converted. Export versions in China's HXN3 class performed better with extensive modifications, but the domestic reputation never recovered. Modern reality shows Progress Rail, Caterpillar subsidiary, EMD's owner since 2010, finally making four-stroke technology work. The 1010J engines in SD70ACE-T4 locomotives are slowly gaining acceptance. Two engines. One revolutionary failure, one evolutionary success. The 265H promised 6,300 horsepower and delivered disaster. The 710 offered reliability and became legendary. Sometimes the future fails and the proven path wins. Subscribe for more mechanical battles between revolution and reality.